So today Apple held their WWDC 25 keynote and they introduced a lot of new stuff across all of their platforms and they're calling it version 26. The first thing they introduced is something they're calling Liquid Glass. And what Liquid Glass is, is a new foundation inspired by Vision OS. It's translucent, it's adaptive, and it's dynamic. Basically, menus and alerts feel like they physically react to your taps. App icons get a whole new look with this whole new glass look. And it's across all of the platforms. It's a whole new look. And it's the first time they've really revamped the look since iOS 7. Next up is Apple Intelligence. There's this new thing called foundation models. And what foundation models is, is it allows developers to use Apple intelligence within their own apps. So first we can start with iOS 26. The lock screen got a full redesign. Icons look cleaner, but are still recognizable. No circles, weird shapes, just fresh layered style that reacts to your wallpaper. Even the time moves around depending on your layout, which is, it's actually kind of nice. The camera app is finally getting a simplified layout. It defaults to photos or videos and you can swipe to reach other modes. It feels just way less clunky. They're also redesigning phone, messages, and Safari. In phone, there's a new layout with recent favorites, voicemails, all in one place. Call screening is also here, which it answers for you and asks for name and reason and then decides whether it should bring you or not, which is another it's a pretty cool feature because I get a lot of spam calls. Messages, gets polls, customizable backgrounds, and even suggestions when polls might make sense. And this is for regular messages, but this will be really nice when it comes to group messaging. Maps learns your daily routes, and in Wallet, you can now add an ID using your passport. And then the next big one within this is visual intelligence. And with visual intelligence, you can now take a screenshot, tap an item, and instantly search for it in other apps or online. Next up, we have WatchOS. 26. And that's also getting the liquid glass treatment too. Control center, smart stack, in-app controls, all refreshed. And there's now an AI workout buddy that uses your fitness history to hype you up mid-workout. That's something I really need. So I'm glad it's coming to watch OS. Music integration is smarter too. It recommends playlists depending on what kind of workout you're doing. And that's basically what watchOS is summed up with. Not a lot, but little changes that will make your workouts and your interactions with your watch a little bit smoother, a little bit more intuitive. Next, we have tvOS 26, and that's for the Apple TV. We get liquid glass across the interface, more colors and layer designs. Profiles are now a thing, and there's a new automatic sign-in API for developers. Basically, fewer logins across all platforms. And that sums up tvOS 26. And then we can get into macOS 26. And there was a lot of thought of what's this gonna be called? They're calling it Tahoe. And it looks really good. The new design is more unified with iOS and Vision OS. The menu bar is transparent. Widgets feel more at home and folders and icons can be customized. Shortcuts now run on a schedule based on actions and Apple intelligence is automatically built into that. Spotlight gets a huge upgrade. It can now perform actions like creating calendar events, launching apps, and even sending emails, all from the search menu. There's also a new games app, which allows plenty of games and a better and higher rendering systems. And that sums up Mac OS Tahoe. And what it is, is a lot of UI changes across the entire board that'll just make your experience a lot more seamless when it comes to working across your Apple products. It's just a new type of consistency that we have not seen across multiple products at one time. And then next up, we have Vision OS 26. You guys remember the Apple Vision Pro from last year? There's some updates to it to the software, not the hardware, still $4,000. On Vision OS, widgets are now spatial, so you can place them anywhere in your digital space. And when I saw the example of this, I was in shock and almost like, this is absolutely crazy that this is even possible because it looks so real life. And it's a pretty cool feature. Photos uses AI to turn 2D images into realistic 3D images, so you can really relive an image, literally. Safari has a distraction-free mode and you can now link two Vision Pros for shared movies, tasks, and games. They're also working with GoPro and Canon for immersive video, which is gonna be something cool to see in the near future is how these camera brands are kind of interacting with Apple to create something within the Vision Pro at a new 360, 180, just VR, AR level. And then Adobe is bringing spatial editing tools to Vision Pro, which is something I wanna try out because I think editing in Vision Pro with a Vision Pro, Vision OS dedicated software could be pretty, pretty cool. 
And last up, iPadOS. The thing that everyone is excited for in these keynotes is what Apple can do with iPad to make it closer to a computer. And it gets everything that iOS got. So it gets that whole new UI design look iOS got, all the features from iOS, and a brand new update to multitasking. There's a full window system now, so you can resize, tile, and layer apps. There's Mac style controls, a new expose view, and an updated files app. Yes, finally, we have updated the Files app and it works more like a Mac, so it's just more usable. And literally, that's all it had to be was a little bit more user-friendly and they've done that. There's also a preview app coming to iPad so you can preview your files and all that stuff, which is another pretty cool feature. Simple, but cool. You can now record high quality audio and video right on the iPad, which is big time. It separates your audio from the callers for podcast interviews and whatever. You can even block out ambient sound and assign different audio outputs to different apps and background tasks. So things like rendering or large exports won't stop you from using your iPad. So yeah, that's not everything. That's just kind of the key features that Apple came out with today, but they did an overhaul on everything. This was no joke of an update. Every OS got hit with design changes, smarter AI, and real push towards flexibility. I'll be diving in deeper this week on what these updates mean for a creative like myself, not just in the creative realm and creating on a daily basis, but also a lot of the admin work and how I use a lot of my platforms, that being my iPad, my watch, my phone, my Mac, all together in one place and how these updates are gonna seamlessly just help my workflow. So if that's something you're into, make sure you're subscribed down below. Make sure you hit a like button, helps the algorithm out, helps me out. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.